Welcome to the next event in the Massachusetts Multicultural Film Festival with the theme of Indigeneities, presenting a season of global contemporary indigenous film and media art. I'm festival director Daniel Pope, and I'm pleased to welcome Virginia McLaren, who will introduce this week's selection of works by the artist Vic Quesada in the MMFF. Virginia McLaurin is a cultural anthropologist who specializes in indigenous imagery and indigenous created film and digital media. She received her PhD from the University of Massachusetts Amherst with a dissertation on the creation of indigenous community websites and the works of indigenous digital media artists in the Northeastern United States. Her work has been featured in Sapiens Anthropology Magazine, Indigenous Celebrity Entanglements with Fame, and the forthcoming title, Critical Race Media Literacy, Themes and Strategies for Media Education. Be sure to join the live stream event on Wednesday, April 13th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time for a conversation and audience Q&A with Vic Quesada, moderated by Virginia McLaurin. Virginia, welcome. Thank you, Daniel. I'm excited for us to view the works of Vic Quesada through the Massachusetts Multicultural Film Festival. Working across multiple mediums, Quezada's works interrogate the ways in which hybrid Latinx and indigenous histories are written upon the land and within ourselves. In addition to film, they have worked with sculpture, ceramics, photography, and performance art. Inspired by our Squatche Chicanx art, they frequently integrate found objects to create physical pieces, which are sometimes incorporated in their film works. The melding of found objects with natural materials challenges the distinctions we create between these objects and how they are used which speaks to Quezada's use of the indigenous philosophy of concentric ecology, indigenous knowledge where all living beings and non-living beings are interconnected. Additionally, some of their pieces call to mind innovative solutions to survival in an indigenous world that could accurately be described as post-apocalyptic. In Seed on Seed, we follow Quezada as they spend two days walking through their hometown of El Paso, Texas, on a nine-mile mission route that connects three Catholic churches and closely follows the U.S.-Mexico border. We see the church buildings, the natural landscape of the area, and the modern storefronts and roadways. Multiple time periods and relations to the land explored as Quezada moves through the space, pushing the manual corn seeder named Ozomotli in front of himself. The dichotomous title, as well as their outfit of corn leaves and a chain link fence, calls us to consider the divisions we have drawn not only through space, but through the personal identities of people like Quezada themselves. And destined for gold, Quezada makes themselves into a small figure in the wide landscape of the Mohawk Trail as they walk with a metal detector, engaged ostensibly in a search for gold or precious metals. As Quezada runs the metal detector over narrow patches of earth, appearing to walk in measured lines that graph the space into explored and unexplored, and call to mind archaeological methods, we consider what we ask from the earth and the ways that we scour, plot, and graph every foot of it. The film's silence may force us to focus on Quezada's actions, and at the same time, reminds us of the drone technology used to film the piece. The aerial camera never gets us close to the explorer, keeping them at a distance from us, just as they are kept physically distant from the land they walk by the unyielding space that the metal detector creates. In several instances, Quezada moves beyond the frame, which has to expand to capture their actions, possibly suggesting the ways in which colonialism consistently expands its scope. However, the presence of water throughout the piece hints that perhaps there is something more important than precious metals that are buried within the earth. Are we really destined for gold? And is that what we should be hoping for? In high grind, low wage, audiences watch as a lush green lawn is mowed. Quezada is again the focus of the film, but that's not quite accurate. As we watch Quezada steadily, rhythmically mow the lawn, moving back and forth with the lawnmower for nearly an hour, we we're never able to focus on them as a subject, never given a close-up that would tell us something about their emotional state, or even if they are sweating after all of their exertions. The camera stays static and distanced, passively taking in Quezada's movements. And so we viewers are placed into the position of watcher, observing the labor of Quezada without contributing. The verdant lawn is reminiscent of upper-class yards, golf courses, and other highly manicured outdoor spaces that are invariably the product of wealth. Patty Gaughan writes that Quezada aims to implicate, to cast the viewer as someone content with watching a worker blend into terrain. Over time, the natural landscape becomes a lush cage, the landscaper sacrificing their own beauty for the sake of the yard. 
Throughout these short films, Quezada's own identity is already implicated. As Quezada themselves has said that they hope to create counter narratives that are brown, two spirit, and queer, that go beyond settler myths, binaries, and borders. One strategy for doing this is centering themselves in these films. In fact, Quezada has said that their works are autobiographical, incorporating Aztec cosmologies from their indigenous heritage and their experiences growing up near the US Mexico border, which created physical divisions within their own family. Challenges to heteronormativity can be seen in their incorporation of corn and seed on seed, since Aztec beliefs hold that corn is a dual spirit god, both male and female, which Western science has also confirmed. We can also see a nod toward challenges of Latinx and working class heteronormativity in their adoption of the blue collar coated, hypermasculine coated white tank top and high grind low wage. At every turn, Vic Quezada challenges us to move beyond simple binaries, which are themselves a product of colonialism and instead to find spaces of hybridity and pathways toward building thoughtful relationships with ourselves, to other people, to animals in the land, and even to the objects in our lives. Please enjoy these three films and be sure to join us on April 20th for a live question and answer session with Vic Quezada. <laughs>